Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share a prophetic word with you based on Matthew 16, 18, in which Jesus speaking to Peter says, you are Peter, Petros, rock. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so the prophetic word that the Lord has given me is the gates of hell this will not prevail in this season. And let me tell you what I mean. He began to tell me about gates and show me about gates. I heard a man of God talking about gates and the Lord has spoken to me about gates before. And actually I have a couple of teachings and prophetic words on my channel about that. But the Lord began, when I heard the word, I actually fell asleep and didn't get to hear all of his message. But when I heard that, the Lord began to drop some things in my spirit and began to speak to me. And so that's what I want to share with you because as we are praying and fasting, many of you on my channel have, in, uh, have joined us in a time of prayer and fasting that is beginning today, July 10th. And so if you watch this later and you want to fast, you can um, look in, check the uh, past videos for that information. But I want to talk about gates and I want to talk about how the gates of hell prevail and how you don't have to let them prevail against you. And so gates are first of all doorways and they're open ways. So a fence when the Lord talks about building up the hedge of protection in the book of Ezekiel, he's talking about a wall or a fence. Um, and a gate is what is at the front of a fence. Um, or it's a doorway or an opening where you have legal access or someone lets you in. Whereas a fence is something where that has been broken down because it has not been taken care of and there's a breach in the wall or in the fence. And so when he talks about building up the hedges of protection, then I then he's talking about the fence that he is around us or the fence that um, that um, has been broken. So I'm gonna just bring that word up for you right now so that we can see uh, what he was talking about, hedge of protection. And so the thing is that um, when a hedge is broken down, then someone needs to stand in the gap and repair it. But when a gate is open, that means that somebody has legal access or the key. They can break down the gates as well. So when Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, that would be an opening up of the enemy to when some when someone is when something is open and then someone has the um, right to come rushing through right so with the enemy if the gates of hell prevail against you that means they it's their gate and so they are opening up the gate and unleashing into your life it's but you have a right to resist them and to keep them locked in and not come in to your life and it takes the petros the rock of jesus christ to help you not help the enemy not prevail against you in that sense. And so when he began to tell me about this, he began to show me different gates. And he said, your mouth is a gate. It's a doorway that you let something out. Psalm 141, three says, set a watch, O, door, uh, o Lord, before my mouth and keep the doors of my lips. So there's a gate and then um, life and death are in the power of of the tongue and so you can bless and you can curse james says with your mouth and so what you say is uh, gives the enemy access it's a key that uh, your word when you begin to let words out of your mouth it has the ability to open up the gates of hell or to release god's angelic host and re release heaven's will let me go to james where he talks about setting on hell that how the tongue sets on hell the uh the fire um sets on fire the 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 um hell itself so let me just go there and untame tongue so james chapter three 
it says here, look at the ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder. That's, chapter, that's verse four wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it sets on fire and it is set on fire by hell. And it goes on to talk about how every kind of beast of the field can be tamed, but the tongue can no man tame because it has unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Poison. With the tongue, we bless God, our Father, and we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. And, and so we have to repent of what we have unleashed because when we speak, it allows it's a gate that opens up something and it, it opens up it gives access it gives legal access this is why revelation says we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony denying the enemy access to you and so sometimes people don't know why something bad is going on but the bible says a curse without a cause will not take a flight and so it won't if a curse in other words a curse or, or something going on destruction or something bad doesn't just happen there's something that the enemy has had legal access to in your life some type of way and many times it's what you said when you're complaining when you're when you're uh, talking about other people it's not just your life because the bible jesus said what you measure to other people will be measured back to you um, the the um, the judgment that you judge people will be measured back to you. And sometimes we say something and we can't figure out why, but we release something in our mouth, out of our mouth, um, on someone else or another situation, and it comes back and hits us from behind, and we're wondering out why it doesn't look quite like what we were saying about that person, but it doesn't have to be. We've allowed a door of access. And so in this season, the Lord said, wherever the gates of hell have been prevailing, have been coming against you, have been ruling, wherever you've opened up a door of access to the enemy by the things you may have said or come in agreement with, not even knowing the power of your words, that you can begin to turn things around at the gate. Just like James talks about the ship. You can begin to speak life instead of death. You can begin to uh, govern your life according, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, change the course of your life according to what God says about you and not speaking evil about other people or yourself or your circumstances to believe the best about everyone. And another thing, another gate, there's ear gates and eye gates. Um, and um, and I, yeah, so you what you hear and what you see creates what your heart meditates on. So what you are listening to and what you are giving eye attention to and viewing oftentimes um, shapes the way you think and perceive and your mindsets. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And even if you are a good Christian and all those things, but you may often say things that even in a joking manner that is releasing, that is, even if it's not releasing a curse, I don't want to say that, but it's holding back what God has because you're contradicting your prayers. So you may be praying one way and then in your time of conversation, you're complaining about your circumstances, been there, done that, but you're, so you're not um, God is waiting for you to line up and, and stay in alignment with what he's spoken about you with your words. And so that um, so that you can close the gate and take back access and link go right from the enemy. And so um, let's see here. I wanted to go to a couple of other scriptures. Psalm 50 verse 23 says, whoever offers praise glorifies me and to them that order their conversation rightly, I will show the salvation of God. When you order your conversation rightly, it's also a word that means conduct or path, 
derek in the um, Hebrew, which means a path or a course in life. And so when you order your conversation or you order your path, you order your path by the words that you speak, and then you will see the salvation of God. So it starts with what what you say, but what you say is controlled by what you think and what you meditate on. And so if you want to close the gates of hell, that is where you start. And let's see, he also gave, gave me, I'm just looking at my notes here. That the Lord gave me in my little book here. My little. He said, you have to beat the enemy at the gate. So when you are in a season of transition, when you are in a a moment in time or an intersection where you could go either way, where you could say one thing, where you can agree with what the enemy has said, you can agree with what your circumstances are, or you can agree with God over your life. You, your gate, which you allow to come out your mouth either opens the door to the enemy or it closes the door and it opens a gives heaven authority to do what you said because he said he's the high priest over our confession not just our confession of faith but over everything and he watches over his word to perform it and his angels do his word they do they work out his word and so it depends on what you say in those moments and sometimes we're in a moment in a hard season and we say the wrong thing but when we looked at the Shunammite woman yesterday um, if you didn't uh, catch yesterday's prayer time on here you can go back and look at that the Shunammite woman after she was given this son that she didn't ask for and he died she and when he died she went to the man of God and when her husband husband asked her what was ready she said it is well and it will be well and when Gehazi Elijah's servant asked her what was going on she said it is well and when she got to the man of God's feet she said did um why did you deceive me did I ask for this son and so she waited and she and then he said he was going to send his servant and she said no 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 I need you to come and sometimes we need to remain silent but it's so that we can um get to the feet of God and tell him the problem and ask him to do something about it because what we release in that moment um, of our desperation, of our um, chaos, of a seeming destruction of something happening, of the enemy being at the gate and trying to come in and wreak havoc in your life. Life is what you say. And so instead of saying, oh my gosh, my son is died, dead and I knew I shouldn't have believed and all of this. She said, it is well, it is well. She said, peace, peace, shalom, shalom. When we read it is well, in the um, English, it is actually the same word for peace, shalom. It's not a difference, not a variation of the word. It's, it's it's the exact same word, shalom. Peace, peace. It is well. It is peace. It is rest. It is prosperity. It is happiness. She said, all is right. All is well. All is calm. All is bright. All is good. She released the her faith. And when she released her faith, it gave her she it gave her the power to then go um, seek out God's help. And sometimes we enter into defeat and we give the enemy access by what we say because we're speaking the opposite of what we want to happen by trying to say things and explain our story and and do all the things. But she said it is well. She didn't say my son has died. She waited until she got there. And then she said it to the man of God. And we can take everything to God in prayer and reason with him right there. He said, come now and reason with me. And that's where he wants you to, to deal with the things that don't look right. So he can give you the solution. Elijah went and he breathed on her son and he laid on him seven times. And the young man woke up. And I don't know what God wants to do in your life, but I do know that the gates of hell do not have to prevail uh, in this season. If you have been experiencing chaos and hard things and even something that you may have done or maybe you do not know how all these things started happening, a series of events, then right now I want you to ask God to forgive you if you've allowed access 
by something, some agreement you made, some words you said, some curse that you open up yourself to. And I'm not talking about Jesus died for every curse, but we still experience the so we're blessed with every spiritual blessing, but we still experience the the decay of this world, the evil of this world, the trouble of this world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. So I'm not saying um, that is our position heavenly, um, in the heavenlies. We are positionally seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are positionally blessed with every spiritual blessing, but we have to walk it out. But we have to learn the lessons and how to prevail, how the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And this is how. And so I want you to ask God to forgive you of that and to point out to you what you have done. And then I want you to use your mouth as a weapon and a tool to bless and not curse, to speak life and not just about yourself and what concerns you, but other people that would you what you measure out will be measured to you. The more you bless, the more it comes back to you. To watch what you're letting in your eye gates and your ear gates in this season, because this is a season where God wants to do mighty things, and, and maybe he's already done mighty things in your life, and this is not for you. Send it to somebody who's going through a hard season and knows how, needs to know how to get a breakthrough. And so I just want to encourage you that the gates of hell do not have to prevail. This is what he says. The enemy is at the gate, but he does not have to prevail. You can prevail and overcome by the power of your words. Do not give him access, and but kick him out and make him leave by what you say. Not just about your life and the things that concern you, but about others. Bless and do not curse. It is crucial during this time. You have the power within you. Ephesians 4, 29, and I'll go there and close. Hallelujah. I want to quote it right, so I'm going to in order. Glory to God. Four twenty nine. It says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And so, would I ask myself, what I say to myself is just because it's true, when we're talking about complaining or gossiping or anything like that, doesn't mean it has to be said. And so, God, I don't want anything to come out of my mouth. I don't want to open up and give, uh, use the keys to, to unlock a, a gate, a door, a point of access to my life. We already got to worry about the fence, but the point of access I can give or I can lock, or I can close. And so set a watch, oh God, before my mouth and keep the doors of my lips. And so what you say should line up with what you pray. In Jesus' name, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you in this season if you implement God's strategies. And wherever the enemy has come in, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him when you begin and, and push him out, when you begin to take the power that is in you and command those things to go and then not speak contrary to what you have commanded. I pray that this word bless you. God